Hello. Hi, everyone out there. Welcome. It's time for uh, the town hall again um, and campaign update and all of that good stuff. Welcome. My name is Susan Maud Bookser Lahaki. I am running for President of the United States as a write in candidate. And um, uh, anyway, this is the town hall and campaign update. Welcome. So, uh, let's see, where shall I begin? Um, I'm still waiting for the Supreme Court to make a decision on my uh, lawsuit that they have, that they're waiting on or something. Uh, so I'm waiting for that. And, um, you know, I'm still calling for a ceasefire in other countries and here at home. Uh, we need to stop the shooting and the killing and everything like that. It's not acceptable. We are a grown creature. We are humans and we need to embrace our humanity. And that means accepting each of us just the way we are. Just the way we are. We were made perfect for our, us, for ourselves, and we have all a right to be here. So we need to stop the aggression going on in Gaza area, in Israel. Now it's expanded to Iran and um, and Lebanon, and there's problems now in Taiwan. So, you know, and then there's all this stuff going on, gang violence and just violence, people against people here in this country. And, you know, I, I just, it's time to just be human for once, <laughs> you know, really, we can do it. We can be nice to each other. We can accept each other just the way we are. So, um, you know, all I'm hearing is the Democrats and Republicans asking for money. I mean, what are they doing with all that money? Where is it? And what are they doing with it? And where are they spending it? So this is uh, a bit crazy. They don't need to be spending so much money on all these different things. And, you know, to keep asking us, the average people, for money is outrageous. It's just not acceptable. Now, I think, if I remember, I I read something online, I think, um, actually from that children's book, about how much each party made in back in 2020, and it was in the, was it a billion? Like one billion something? I mean, come on. You know, the average Joe doesn't have that kind of money. So, um, and apparently, uh, you know, if everybody gave apparently $27, it would be a lot. It would be millions. So, um, but that's not acceptable because the average person doesn't have that $27 to spend. You need to, if you want money, just call up your rich friends and ask them. So, um... What I can say is, folks, apparently, you know, when we pay our taxes, we have a little place where we could donate like one to three dollars, I think, to the presidential campaign fund. And then that's why everybody gets involved in the primary, because in the primary, what happens is you can get matching funds. So uh, that's why everybody signs up for the primaries and then drops out. And that's why we even have primaries, because some states have primaries even after the uh, conventions, which for me doesn't make sense at all. You've already made your decision. So what are you primarying about? But it's to get that money. So let's stop giving money to that campaign fund. It's just more. And then they use our tax money for other things. There's just more and more of your and my money going 
to host these terrible events, to host these stupid ads about sending them money, or to host their, their hate ads about, you know, whatever they're hating about each other. And it's also, you know, only really going to the two big parties. I mean, there are smaller parties involved, and yes, I guess they're getting money too. Um, so we need to just stop funding these things. This is one place where we ourselves are guilty. So stop funding this stuff because it's annoying. Who wants to be, you know, listening to great music and then suddenly an ad for one of the two big parties comes on and they're yelling about the other one and how bad they are. It's annoying. Don't fund these people. If they want to run for office, make them do it themselves so that they can actually feel what it feels like, you know? Because right now we're helping them. We're part of the problem. So take take back your money. Don't, don't give any donation to that campaign thing when you pay your taxes. It's, it's no need. They got, they got big people in their back pockets who can give them all the money they want. They don't need yours and mine. So, um, so don't, just don't, don't do it. Uh, then, um, you know, the other thing that I try not to do, I mean, I have said a few things that I really want to do. Um, and then it seemed like, you know, I had to come up with a tax concept and stuff like that. So I did, but uh, but the real thing is, you know, we're, we're constantly hearing these promises from the the different parties, and you know, we know that they also can't deliver on these promises. So that's why I personally have tried to keep my promises down to as minimal as possible. I mean, I, I truthfully, I don't promise anything because uh, you know you have to get into office, and then you also have to. Um, have Congress work with you. And so if you don't have those things going, then um, then it's not going to happen anyways. My hope is to, what I try to do is influence the, the people who have the power and hopefully they will do something. I, I mean, if you vote for me, I will hopefully then get enough votes and get into office and be able to do what what we need to do to make our country run in a, you know, like clockwork and and be good for all of our citizens rather than just be good for some so that's my that is my goal that is my promise to try to make life a good standard of living for all of our people with no one left behind that is that is what i'm trying to do and that's um that's my goal so um you know i I'm doing my best. I'm, you know, trying to be visible and get around the country. And then I'm trying to, you know, bring good ideas while I'm also discovering things on my own and I share those with you. So I've been trying to be as transparent as possible too. Now, um, yeah, so that, that's, that's where I am. Um, what I would like to say is that uh, as far as campaign, so being a presidential candidate, well, I had two deadlines recently that I had to fulfill because I'm still on the month um, uh, putting my expense reports together monthly. And then there's also like a 15-day um, deadline for last-minute uh, monies that have come in at the beginning of October. And so I got those two done, so I have some new information on there. I don't know if I'm doing any of this right, you know. I'm not an accountant, so, you know, I'm doing the best I can. I know there there might be an issue with um, earlier, so how can I say this? When I finished my first presidential campaign, I didn't close my books. I kept everything open because I was going to run for this office again. And, and so I kept it open and um, kept it open. And, you know, I had YouTube uh, going for me. So I kept that, paying that. And then um, 
I didn't know what category, but I finally figured it out that there's like two categories that you can do money for primary and money for um, general election. And I, I think I put most of my early stuff in the primary category, but technically, um, because I ended up being unregistered because after my congressional run, or while I was still running even, I realized all the fraud in the voting system, and I stopped campaigning congressional-wise, and I started fighting the, um, the election division of West Virginia, as you know. So... Um, so anyways, I did finish that campaign, even though I stopped sort of running and campaigning wise. And I just um, started working on the lawsuit and learning about the whole registering to vote fiasco, and which we're hearing about now daily pretty much about new fraud and stuff. But um, uh, what did I want to say? Yeah, so all during that time, I kept putting primary down. And uh, technically, I, I became unregistered. So that meant, you know, I was unfit for the Republicans to even be in their primary. So, you know, I, um, I don't know what to do now. So this is where I am. So I have all these entries that I made for the primary, but I wasn't even in the primary. And there is no primary for unregistered Republicans. If there was, then technically I won it because I was the only unregistered Republican. And even at that, for a long time, I was a Christmas Republican, which we all know that doesn't even exist. So long story short, um, I don't know what to do. So I, what I have to do, actually, I mean, I don't know what to do about those entries right now. What I have to do is I need to contact the um, FEC, the Federal Election Commission. I actually received an email from them, and uh, it was a reminder to, like, check some documents and stuff like that. So I also had problems putting in my document information earlier this year when I was trying to update some things and they somehow took my old address from when I was in New York City. So, um, you know, I mean, the amount of computer failures in, in just the whole election process is, it's crazy. But long story short is I need to check on my, on my, um, documents to see what they say because I think there was a way where I had to do one first and then the other but I did it wrong the first time not that I did it wrong but I just did it and then it took the old address so then I needed to go back and do it backwards so that it would take everything differently <clears throat> and I don't think I made that final step so I got to do that too but anyway so I got an email from them about wanting to talk to the treasurer and, and if I have questions that I should ask them. So this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be sending an email back and asking them, you know, what do I do? Because technically I was not in any primary and I was putting the primary in there because I thought that was what you were supposed to do. So let's see what they say. Let's see if I have to go back and change all my entries. I don't know how many that is, maybe 20. Um, or less, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, yeah, so I just wanted to let you know that's me being transparent, you know, and not knowing how to how to do these these things. I have nobody guiding me, so you know I'm not doing it perfectly, and that's that's the uh, that's part of the fun, you know. It's a learning process. It's a good program. I just took the free one that they have, and it works just fine. <clears throat> it's just um, you know not being an accountant, I don't know where everything goes and I don't know how it works. So I have that as a question and then I have a few other things that I need to check on. So some of my latest entries are also probably incorrect so I need to just find out what to do. So yeah, so that's that's where I am. So paperwork, <laughs> you know, it always comes down to paperwork and you know I'm actually tired of the paperwork so this will be my last election for I don't know when, 
a long time. I'm going to maybe go about changing the country in a different way if this doesn't work out. But, um, so, yeah. So, um, what do I want to say? Yeah, I don't know. All right. So, so that's, that's as far as me and, uh, transparency and doing the, um, documents properly. I'm, like I said, I am tired of them. So I'm going to take a break from documents and running companies and stuff like that. This is just annoying. It's just, oh, I've been, I've spent the last four years not doing anything, but filling out paperwork and it's not fun. So, uh, let's move on to you. <clears throat> and how is it going for you? Um, as you know, we probably in some states and some counties, they probably still need helpers at the polls. So we need honest people working there because, um, you know, I don't know if we have honest people working there right now. As we're hearing daily, there's all this fraud going on, people doing all sorts of suspicious stuff. And so, you know, it's not acceptable. Uh, there is a solution. I wrote about it at my website. You can go look at it. It's susan4usa.com. You can read all about the way that I've I've seen work in person. And it's practiced in many countries all over the world. And, and it's a solution. It's the perfect solution. One ballot per person, period, delivered, hand-delivered to you so you have it. And there's no question. You have it early, where you have a month to study it, make your own decisions. There's not a lot of this stupid money being thrown around for stupid videos and, and emails, or not, well, emails and texts and phone calls. And, and then we also got the ads in between the great music and, you know, the harassment from the Democrats and Republicans, it's enough. You know, I have to admit, I don't really hear a lot of uh, Libertarians or Green Party making a lot of uh, advertisements. So it's really, we're talking about the two big ones. Let's, let's just, you know, who nobody likes this. So why do we keep letting them do this? So anyway, um, yeah. What we need is people to help out at the at the uh, election booths, you know, to help uh, currently with our system. Uh, unless, of course, the Supreme Court comes forward and then we'll have the new system ready and we can move forward and, and vote in a new way. And, and then we'll have this easier way. But it, you, it's your country. And it's our, your and my responsibility, our responsibility to make sure that these elections are clean, that there's no corruption. So anyone who's got free time, get out and help. It's time. You need to get out and help because um, it's, it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable and we need good people helping. And then after the ballots are open, they need to be counted. So we need you there to count too. Uh, if you can also, if you see anything wrong, report it to the FBI. They have a tips page, go to their website, fill it out. If you don't feel comfortable putting your name on there, you can do it anonymously. Or if you want, you can put my name. Okay, you can say you're doing it for me and I thank you because we gotta stop the fraud. There's no way around it. This is not acceptable. And we have tools. And today's world, they're pretty easy, although, as you know, computers have problems like I just described. But uh, the FBI's website works pretty good. The, I will say, on some of the areas, they have only a limited space that they give you. You can only say so many words. So, you know, have your thoughts a little bit together when you, when you go to report something and do your research before, you know, if you know specifically a person, you need to know their name and at least a telephone number, maybe an email. If you know their address, that's also great, you know, um, so you give as much information as possible so that they can do their job as quickly as possible. 
So I highly recommend it. It's really good. So FBI, yes. And thank you, FBI, for your important work you're doing. Um, if it's an international issue, then that's the CIA, and you should go to the CIA and give them all the information you can, too. So <clears throat> definitely um, look into that. Uh, they also have a tips page. It's a works similar but different, and um, and you can give them a lot of information, and then uh, let's see what happens. But if we stay silent, if we see things and we don't tell, then this is a problem. You know, especially when we know it's really big fraud, then it's important to to let somebody know. You know, even if you do it anonymously. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so in my new way, like I said, you know, we get the information, we have time to look it over, and then we have a whole month to bring it in. And you show your ID, and you hand it in, and then you're done. There's no, like, standing at a booth and trying to figure it out or suddenly being surprised that you have to vote on whether you want a bridge built or a new highway or um, or if you're going to um, I don't know start putting solar panels on the town hall uh, or if there's going to be a change to your state's con constitution these things should be seen before you walk in the door. And I can tell you here in West Virginia, I mean, I'm not in West Virginia, but in West Virginia, during the election back in 22, I walked several times into the Secretary of State's offices in different locations, and there were piles of flyers that were having important information about what we had to vote on but they were sitting in the office, you know, like 200, a stack of 200 or 300. They weren't being sent out. They were just sitting there doing nothing. And probably at the end of the election, they get thrown out. So not only are we killing trees, which you know how I feel about trees, but I mean, polluting with all the inks and then, and then we're just wasting time and money. Somebody made those up. They spent time designing it, and it never got seen. I mean, come on. And this is not only going on in West Virginia. It's going on everywhere. There are only a few states who are actually informing their citizens of what they have to vote on, whether it is a big election like this one or whether it's the smaller one in two years we're not getting our information, and that is wrong. It is wrong. And then the other part is sometimes there are real elections in the primary, but nobody knows it because we're not told it. And going through the newspaper is not acceptable because the newspapers are in the back pockets of the two big parties, and they're not going to, they don't want you to know because they're going to vote for you. They're just going to manipulate your vote. So anyway, we got to get all sorts of things out of our system. We got to change our system. So the concept is you get informed as a voter and then you make a real decision. <laughs> that's how it works, folks. And that's how it should work. So we need to give the power back to you, the people. And that's, that's where we are. Um, yeah, so that is my vision that I would like to bring to our country a new voting process because we cannot have any change until we change the way we vote. And daily we are hearing now so much corruption and fraud and manipulation in the system. So this is not acceptable, folks. No. So Supreme Court, please. You need to come forward, declare that registering to vote is unconstitutional, and then we need to go forward. The lists are all wrong, and we, didn't, we don't have to spend our time checking those names. We can use the social security number list. There's one per person, and that has one address, and that address is where you vote. You don't get to vote in 10 states because you have houses in 10 states, no. 
You vote in one state, one address, one vote, one person, period. So in this situation, however, if some of you listened to me or decided on your own to be unregistered like me, then we are unregistered. If you are registered, you might still be able to unregister, but it seems like the Supreme Court has voted that the people who tried to take illegal people off, I think it was Virginia, tried to take uh, over a thousand names off of their list of illegal um, uh, foreigners who were voting for who knows how long. Um, they they took them off the list, but the Supreme Court said, no, you got to put them back on because you have this law that says that you can't take them off. So, um, so depending on your state, maybe you can still unregister. But maybe at this point, I mean, I, I do recommend still try to unregister because if they don't have your name, they can't manipulate it. So we're still far enough away where you could still probably do that. Then you go in on election day and you you vote. You ask for a provisional ballot and sometimes they're the same as the other ballots and sometimes they're different, but you get a provisional ballot and you fill it out and um and you show id and then in west virginia i was told it goes to a board and they're going to decide if my vote gets counted which is unconstitutional i am a citizen i can prove it right when i vote there's no need to discuss whether it has to be decided by a board if it's a real vote because it's a real vote <laughs> so there's no discussion west virginia when I vote, my vote is my vote. I can prove it. I am a citizen. You have to count it. You don't get to decide. Sorry. Uh, if I walk in the door and I don't have ID, then we might have something to talk about. But that's not the case. So, um, anyway... Don't let the states, I mean, don't let the Democrats and Republicans push you around because that's what we're really talking about. They're trying to push us all around and trying to control our vote. And this is a no-no. So you go in, you ask for a provisional ballot, you show your IDs, you get it, you fill it out, and you give it back to them. You'll probably have to sign a book that they might have that says that you voted so you sign that and then you should be really done and then they should count it if you can prove that you're a citizen so you need a passport or your birth certificate to prove you're a citizen then if your name has changed from either of those things you will need to bring the document that has that changed it so that you can show that hey i i did this and so i changed and now i'm I'm this new name, and then you need to show that you're living where you're living. So that would mean a uh, driver's license or whatever sort of lease you might have or something. Um, I don't know. Check with your um, county clerk. Call them up and say, hey, what do I need to bring to prove that I am who I am? And you can already do a provisional ballot now if you want to vote early, I believe. Um, every state is different, though. You might want to check. And if you go to the wrong polling place, your vote will not be counted. I, I mean, I don't think that that's logical, and I don't think that that should be allowed. But I cannot. That one is one that's difficult to fight, in my opinion. Maybe you can fight it, but it's it's... So the rule is that the states have the right to make the rules around elections currently and this is one of the things we got to start changing because they just keep taking advantage of this whole election process and it's enough now um so what we need to do is currently unless the supreme court comes forward with my lawsuit uh, we're going to have to deal with the way the states have organized it or the democrats and republicans have organized it i mean let's just forget it we don't even have to talk about any state we have to talk about the democrats and republicans because they've organized 
and orchestrated this whole thing. And so we have a hostile takeover of our country is what we have. It no longer is for the people. It's for the Democrats and Republicans. And um, they are, um, what do I want to say? Um, yeah. So call your county clerk and find out where are you supposed to go and vote. And they will tell you. And that's where you go and vote. Um, you can double check it usually on their website too by putting in your address and then that should tell you also where you go uh, but uh, but just double check with them too because it's if you want your vote really counted it's good to just extra check that you're going to the right place you know uh, and and then when you walk in the door make sure you have your IDs with you and show it and whatever and take your time don't rush do what you got to do, but be prepared. Um, sadly, you know, be prepared means that uh, they didn't give you anything. So you're going to have to do a little extra work and find out what we're voting on. And that's, that's the other problem. So anyway, uh, provisional ballot is the one to ask for. And, and then from there, you can vote. So that's, that's where we are with that. Um, what else can I say? I don't know. It's fall, you know, and it's beautiful. The trees are changing colors and I'm up in Washington state in the west corner of our country. I, I did not get up to Alaska, although I'm, I'm not giving up hope. I might find a way. So don't, don't give up hope. But I've been to 49 of our 50 states and even one of our territories. I, I don't think I've been to more than one of our territories. But yeah. So, um, so Alaska I will come and visit though and if not now then soon because I would like to go and visit you um, and what else I guess that's that's about it oh no you know I'm fighting right now um, Wikipedia uh, I think somebody's taken over my Wikipedia account and I can't get in so I've asked them to get me in but I haven't heard and they have some some bad information on there about me about right now and you know I've been so busy doing everything that I had no time to um, to get to these like accounts that I have at all these different voting areas so first off I'm running for president not for Congress I'm running for president not for Congress right now Google is uh, making all my Congress stuff pop up again. So I, I don't know why that is, but I got to change something there. Um, so uh, yeah, so I got my homework. I got lots of paperwork to do basically, or electronic work to do and, uh, and get these things straightened out because yeah, these, uh, places are, um, you know, doing some weird things. So, uh, yeah, so my Wikipedia page is not up to date. My Instagram is definitely not up to date. It used to be linked to my um, my West Virginia uh, page, or it might have been even to my original president's page. Then I ran for Congress, and then I had it attached, and then it got disconnected somehow. I think my phones were stolen, all three of them, at various times over the last year and a half. So I guess probably when those were stolen, it got disconnected somehow. So I'm going to try to reconnect my Instagram, but right now it's reading that I'm running for Congress. I, no, it says I'm running for president, but as an unregistered Republican. And that's wrong. I'm running as an unregistered presidential candidate as a write-in candidate because I've dropped the Republican. My dream was to, you know, save the party, but I think that um, it's just gone too far now, and it's just too Christian. 
and it's not really, you know, Lincoln and Roosevelt and McKinley, they're all rolling over in their graves right now. They, they do not recognize this party. It is not their party whatsoever. And it's a shame, you know, and for Lincoln, I really wanted to try to support it, but there's just no chance. There's just, they're a part of the corruption and they have no place, in my opinion, in the future of our country, not the way it is. So we need to start all over folks vote anybody but a Democrat or Republican, anyone else. Vote Libertarian. Vote um, Green Party. Vote Constitution Party. Just don't vote Democrat or Republican. Because they're the problem. They've taken over control of our country for over 150 years, and they're not giving it up freely. So we have to vote them out. So vote them out, please. We can do better than this. All right. So, um, yeah. So I guess that's it. Let me get back to my documents and changing my online exposure and you know every time I, I had to get a new phone because I've lost several phones since I've been in the US um, every time I got like a new connection I had to set up a new email address so I got like tons of email addresses that are useless now and um, or I made false starts when I was running for Congress and the second time with the uh, with the presidency so but anyway you know yeah I got how do I get rid of some of this stuff I don't know so this this is the ups and downs of running for president um, you know you get uh, you get bogged down by paperwork and protocol and all this silliness uh, but anyways if the yeah if this doesn't work out um, there is a plan B but um, I hope, you know, that we'll be working with Plan A because it, our country needs some good change. We can be leaders of the world again, but not with the people who are wanting to, who are in the two big parties. You know, I don't like to say bad things and this is not really meant to be one of these things, but... Um, but we can do better. Okay. So anyways, um, thanks for stopping by. It was nice to spend this time with you and I wish you a good day wherever you are. I am Susan Maud Bookser Lahaki. I'm running for president of the United States as a write in candidate. So you have to write my name in. You can just write in my first and my official last name. So Susan, S-U-S-A-N, and Bookser, B-U-C-H-S, like Susan, E-R. And that should be enough. Uh, if you want to add Lahaki on there, you can. If you want to add Maud in the middle, you can. But those are extra. Um, you won't get extra points for it. But um, yeah, you know. So Susan Bookser is what you need to write in. And again, if you want to look up my uh, website is susan4usa.com. Recently, I went in there and added my connection to my my new my new old Twitter account because that's also not coming up right away, and some other things. Um, yeah, so I'm working also on maybe putting in one more video on my website. That's gonna they're gonna be changing platform for me there at some point. So. Uh, you know, after the election, I don't know what's going to happen with the website. We'll have to wait and see. But anyway, this is this is what's going on. All right. So um, anyway, thank you for stopping by, and I wish you a nice day wherever you are. Bye for now. <laughs>